Hello my bookish friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing the shadow and bones spread in my reading journal. So if you want to hear my thoughts on this book, stick around. Welcome back friends to my channel. We are doing another reading journal and book review. This time we are looking into Shadow and Bone. It is part of the Grishaverse and it is so great. Let me tell you why. First off, I want to tell you this is a map from the Grishaverse. This is not just from the Shadow and Bone series, but in each of the books the map gets a little bigger and then in the series that follow after this one it gets more in depth as you see more and more of the world and we have characters that travel to different places and new characters that are from other places so this world gets expanded in each book in each series for this spread before i get too much into before i get away from myself into the series um, i want to talk about what i'm doing for this spread i'm doing kind of a dutch door situation here i'm taking four pages for this spread, but I'm taking the, the middle two, folding them inwards, and then I'm going to glue the map over that and then cut down the middle of this map so that it opens up. And when you turn to the page, it'll be the map and you open up the center and that's where it's going to have my thoughts on the story. I have never done anything like this in any of my journals or planners or anything, but I figured I've been doing these really sweet kind of basic spreads in my opinion where mostly it's just been like a header and a footer, a little bit of decor, a little bit of ephemera, and the main event is the blank pages that I fill with my thoughts on the book. But I see all these incredible, incredible layouts and I'm like, man, I gotta up my game. So that's what I'm doing here. I have now folded those inside pages inward. This is now just realizing the page doesn't quite fit like I thought it would, but that's okay. We're a big fan of improv on this channel, so we're gonna make it work. So here I'm folding the page to make sure I find the center. Duh, sorry. <laughs> but that's what I'm doing is finding the center, making sure that it is all lined up and perfectly center. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist, <laughs> so even if my work doesn't show that, I do prefer things to be lined up nice and evenly, but not too obsessive about it, I swear. I'm getting help. Leave me alone. Moving on. <laughs> so then I cut down that line. Again, see, don't have to be perfect. I grab my scissors to cut down this line, feeling the thought of, see, I don't need to be perfect. And then I ended up getting my paper cutter anyway. So we ignore that thought of everything doesn't have to be perfect because I wanted it to be lined up straight. So we do. And uh, so now that we have our two pieces, again, it was not quite the same size as the book. So I'm just grabbing a black Crayola marker. I'm filling in the edges so that the map will sit over and it'll have a nice black border. I then glue each page down again. The folded page is getting glued to the page before it. And then the map half is getting glued over both of those pages to keep it sealed down. And then the same on the other page. And so now we have our lovely opening. This is where I'm gonna write down my thoughts. And then we have it closed and we've got our full map. So there's the first half done. We've got our, we open up the thing, grand reveal in the middle. Now I was looking at this thinking I was done, but as I lived with it for a couple of days and was about to start filling in the, my thoughts on this book, I realized it was not as grand as I had hoped it would be it didn't really look like anything special. And that's not what I was going for. I didn't spend all that time cutting and printing and folding and using two pages to have it not look like a grand event. So I added to it. Shadow and Bone is the first book in the Grishaverse world, in the Grishaverse universe. It is a, what I would call a classic fantasy. There is a unique world 
specific to this story. It has its own laws, rules, history, and while we're reading the story, we get slowly introduced to how this world works. A lot of fantasy books just sort of smack you over the face with a lot of details and world building in chapter one. This series does such an amazing job of sprinkling it in there. Book one introduces you to our main character, Anna Starkov. When she was very young, she was orphaned and she was sent to this orphanage. She grows up in Ravka with her friend Mal, who is also an orphan and from the same city as her. Both their parents have died trying to cross the Shadowfold. What's the Shadowfold? They introduce this to you so beautifully. It's not like a bam in your face. You learn about a lot of this stuff kind of as their children, as they hear it from the grown-ups, as they hear horror stories about how the Darkling made the shadow fold, whether it was out of vengeance, whether it was a mistake. Regardless, he was a Grisha who was a shadow Grisha, and he was able to call on shadows and darkness, and he created this space where everything died. There is no light and all of these horrible monsters live there. It separates Ravka. So there is West Ravka and there is Ravka, but now it's separated. And in order to get anything from the sea that's in West Ravka, they have to cross the shadow fold on things called skiffs, which are basically boats that Air Grisha push across with winds that they create. They go across, they go to West Ravka where they have all of their shipments from the sea and they can exchange goods and services. They can feed the military, they can feed the citizens, they can update their maps, they can get news, they can, you know, get things traded. Now, Ravka is kind of screwed. To the north, they have the Fjarda, which is all ice and they are hunting Grisha. And so they come into Ravka and often attack. Then to the south, they have the Shuhan, which is another group of people who are often warring with Ravka. And then to the east, they have mountains. So they're really sandwiched in. And to the west, they've got the fold. There is nowhere for them to go. If they want supplies, they have to go through the fold to the coast to West Ravka. On one of these trips, Mal and Elena's parents have died. That's where the story starts. But we learn this information throughout the first two chapters, just sort of organically from some of the adults who are around talking to the kids, the kids talking to each other through dialogue, not in a info dump that all happens at the beginning and bores you. It's beautifully folded in. You learn about the gods and deities. You learn about history and the saints, the culture and the community of all of these different places because each one of them have their own rich culture and community, and it is all sprinkled in there so beautifully. So by the end of book one, you feel like you understand the world, <laughs> but not even close, because come book two, there's this whole other side of the world that we didn't know about, but we didn't need it in the first book. It wasn't relevant to the plot, but as we get into the second one, we learn even more and it's commonplace it's stuff that they knew too but now it's relevant so now that information is coming in we learn more history we learn more lore more about the deities and the saints and the the cultural community it's really fantastic i'm probably not doing it justice because i'm just so amazed by how this author has managed to teach us so much about her universe without boring the crap out of us and just giving us one chapter of here. It's sprinkled in so beautifully. The plot! I swear I'm gonna get there. Elena thinks she is just a regular kid and her and her best friend live together at this orphanage and life's not fantastic but it's everything she wants. She doesn't want to leave him. So when the Grishas come to test the kids to find out if any of them are Grisha, Mal can't do the test because he's injured. So Elena injures herself to keep herself from being taken away. Elena and Mal are happy, content, let's say, in the orphanage. They have each other. That's all they need. It's them against the world. They both believe that they are perfectly normal kids, just like everybody else. They are not Grisha. It's fine. And they have a little bit of a bias against Grisha. 
They grow up, they join the military, she becomes a map maker, and he is a tracker. He gets called to go across the shadow fold, and she is terrified for him. So, you know, she does a little bit of shenanigans to make sure that she goes on that trip as well. This trip across the shadow fold changes everything for them. There is a big event that happens in the shadow fold where it gets revealed that she is a Grisha. A very special, super rare Grisha. So of course, she gets scooped up and she gets trotted off to the little palace and is starting to get some training. She is separated from Mal. This is a beautiful story in the sense of there is an underlying romance that happens between a couple of the characters, but it doesn't start out as an awkward love triangle. It's There's attention from one person, there's affection for another, and she makes her choices based on who the people are and what's best for her situation. And even when it becomes a little bit push and pull, it's dealt with as something that is also happening in her life. It's never put forward as the main priority. I love that. I, lo I love so many things about this book. There is a whole wild adventure that happens. There is dramatic moments. There is adventure. There are battles. There is the fight for good and evil. There is magic fights. There are sword fights. There are air fights. There are, there are digging through underground tunnels. There is, oh my gosh, you think of what you want in an adventure book. This book has it. I swear it does. And it is so well written. The language is beautiful. The world is intricate and detailed and rich. The characters are beautiful and flawed and perfect and not perfect. And they're perfectly imperfect. No one is all good. No one is all bad. Everyone has redeemable qualities. And even the monsters are, you kind of want to see them not prevail, but I don't know, be redeemed, even if they're irredeemable? I don't know. I just loved so many of the characters in this story. I love how from the whole thing, you can totally see she had a clear idea in mind. At no point are the characters meandering. At no point is the story flailing or the plot just putting in time. Every chapter progresses the story. Everything that happens enlightens the characters and informs the plot. Everything gets called back to and it is laid out so perfect to the end that is so bittersweet I was crying. I think the end, being so sad at the end, spoke more of myself than of the book. And I learned a lot about myself and my reading habits and preferences when I was reading this book. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, or if I did a terrible job explaining this story or getting your interest peaked, check it out. Now to me, this looks so much more impressive. I really like how this spread turned out. Um, I like the gold paint. It just makes it look really impressive. When I turn to this page, I, it feels dramatic. It feels important. And as this is one of my top picks for this year, did I not mention that? As this is one of my top picks for this year, um, I wanted it to stand out when I'm flipping through. I want to look at it and remember, wow, I must have really liked this book and read my notes to remember why. This is one of my five star reads. It is most definitely going to be on one of my top 10 lists for the year. I don't know where it's going to show up yet. That's going to come at the end of the year, but it is definitely one of my favorite reads for this year. Five out of five stars for the whole series. Absolutely. And I totally recommend you check this book out. Just saying, you'll be doing yourself a huge disservice if you don't. All right, that's it for me, my bookish friends. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed either the spread, my book review, or just hearing my crazy thoughts. Hit that like button. Let the algorithm know I'm bringing you content you enjoy. If you've read this book, if you're going to read this book, if you're thinking about reading this book, drop down in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on the book, the TV series on Netflix, the spread that I did in my journal, or, you know, you want to tell me how poorly I did a Dutch door style 
whatever. Drop it all in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts. I love hearing from you and I love chatting with you guys. So by all means, please do all the things. If you want to see what I'm up to between videos, you can follow me on Instagram and chat with me there. I try and post a couple of times a week. Try. Try. Um, I post videos every Saturday morning. So hopefully I will see you in the next one, guys. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>